Welcome to Read Only Memories. This is a cyberpunk adventure game where you play as a journalist in Neo San Francisco who meets the first sapient machine. I've heard really good things about it, so I'm excited to jump into it. As always, if you'd like to play this game for yourself, you'll find some more information in the description. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start a new game here. I've only played for a couple minutes just to make sure everything works, so this is pretty much a blind playthrough. Neo San Francisco, 2064 AD. The world is on the cusp of not one, but three technological singularities. Cybernetic augmentation and genetic modification allow the repair and enhancement of almost any part of a human body. Millions of people jack into virtual worlds every day to work, play, and connect with one another with advanced brain-to-machine technology. Easier access to genetic modification leaves hybrids walking the streets, looking less human every day. Relationship organizational managers, or ROMs for short, are the commonplace companion and tool of any modern person. However, they are still machines at their core. The logic they are built on impedes their ability to think for themselves and determine their own behavior. Right. You see, this is at the heart of why we took on this merger with Parallax. We wanted to take artificial intelligence to the next level. And now, well, we have devices that can truly adapt. Organizations like the Human Revolution seek to slow the relentless pace of progress, fearing that unchecked technology will make us lose the very things that make us human. High above the rising tension below, a parallax engineer buries himself in schematics and equations, trying to bring a new kind of life into the world. And with this, humanity's destiny will be altered forever. Home sweet home. Okay, before I continue, I just want to say something that's probably on a lot of people's minds, and is certainly on mine, and that's that I'm like 99% certain that the the uh, narrator in the beginning intro is, I don't know the actor's name, but the person who did Lee from The Walking Dead. I'm like 99% certain that's him, and it's really, really strange to hear him in this game. Because I just think of Lee. I just think of Lee. Like, basically, basically Lee narrated that introduction. <laughs> Which is a very strange thought. Uh, anyway. Alright. As always in adventure games, I love to just take a look around people's apartments. Get a feel for their life by examining every single thing in excruciating detail. So let's do that. Okay. Maybe not so sweet. Musty might be a better descriptor. I don't know. Doesn't look bad. I mean, looks like the light over your sink kind of wants to give you a seizure. But other than that, it looks <clears throat> cozy. This is the only room in the entire apartment, isn't it? It probably is. It looks really cramped. Your home within your home. Nothing like curling up under those blankets and escaping away for a while. You'd better submit your article before you turn in, or you won't have a place to sleep for long. Okay, right, I am a journalist. <laughs> Prop the window open with a book. I guess it doesn't stay open on its own. Of course not. 
Well, I guess let's submit my article before I look around the rest of the place. I guess submitting my article on time is more important than examining this coffee cup. I guess. Lappy is a bit of a relic. <laughs> it's even been nicknamed Lappy. You have an article due tonight. Better finish it before bed. Okay. Okay, today, journal logic, lips live, and inbox. This looks like the icon for YouTube. That's gotta be for doing my journal-y stuff, and this is news. Well, let's do my journal thing before looking at YouTube. I can look at cat videos later. Oh god, they're not just cat videos. They're neo-cat videos. They're future cyberpunk cat videos. <gasps> I want to look at cyberpunk cat videos. Can I do that, please? Journal Logic isn't the fanciest program, but it's the only word editor that still gets updates for a machine as old as yours. Alright, let's compose. Uh, before you can re review the GX Ultra Beats. Oh, sorry, Beats. Beats. I gotta get the Z in there. You must become one with the GX Ultra Beats. Where did you put those damn headphones anyways? Oh. Well, I guess we can't quite do that yet. In that case, let's look around the apartment. I think I've already spied them right here. There they are. But let's pretend we didn't see them and let's look at every single thing other than what we're supposed to do. Hawaii Mo poster. Your friend Hayden gave this to you. The group is old, but the music is timeless. Uh, that's what he said, at least. Careful. That's a load-bearing poster. <laughs> For a place as old as this, it might be. <laughs> Tear off the poster and the ceiling just crumbles in. Oh my god. This is so there's so much interaction like interactivity here. I'm gonna I'm probably gonna be on the screen for the entire episode. I'm sorry everyone, but it's gonna happen. A beautiful 24-7 view. If you're a fan of up close masonry. Ah. One of those views of the other building a couple feet away. But hey, if you stick your head out, you could probably look down into the alleyway. Despite the smell, keep the window open. Better to have gross air than no air. Talk to the window. <laughs> There's no one out there. Well, I suppose I could close it if I took out the book, but I guess I don't want to do that. A copy of Wickfield. Sometimes the old books are the best. Especially to keep your window propped open. Huh. Yeah, I guess in the future, books... I mean, this far in the future... Like, this is about 50 years in the future from now. 45, 50 years. Given the fact that books are already being somewhat phased out by, you know, tablets and stuff like that. Like, 45, 50 years in the future. I'd be surprised to find any books, really. At least, in general. Of course, there'd be preserved copies and stuff. Classics can get boring pretty fast after multiple reads. Besides, it's more useful holding up the window. You start to the tell <laughs> you start to tell the book a story before realizing the irony. I guess it's gonna stay. How you doing, plant? This plant's in pretty bad shape. Aren't they supposed to be one of the easier plants to take care of? Oh, does it need water? Careful. The poor thing is more fragile than a snowflake. I wonder if I can water it. You don't know exactly what that ooze is, only that it seems to be growing. Running water might just make it worse. Jesus Christ, clean it. You try talking to the sink, but it gives you the cold shoulder. How rude. Wait, this is the fridge? That's so small! The video screen on the front says, Mustard, half full. Spoiled milk. Ten days past expired. You open up the fridge to see a bottle of mustard and a carton of spoiled milk. 
which has developed an odor. Maybe the spoiled milk has one more good day on it. Maybe. Um. Well, I'm not going to drink it, but I guess there's no harm in taking it. Yay! Spoiled milk added to items! Can I water the dying plant with spoiled milk? <laughs> Talk about rubbing salt in the, the wound. Poor thing. I mean, I guess we can try. <coughs> Excuse me. Clearly water from the sink isn't an option right now. But this gross spoiled milk is definitely not a nutritious alternative. Aww. Stack of papers. Stack of paper for your unpublished novel. Pen on paper is the most tangible method. But if you're gonna be so sloppy, maybe going digital, digital would be a good goal. A single piece of loose, unsorted paper lies on the ground. It sort of suits the room's aesthetic. Better with it there on the ground, don't you think? Yeah, I guess. Between the spoiled milk and the dying plant and the oozing drain, I guess so. Coffee. The great equalizer. The one thing that the poor and rich alike need to chug through the day, you assume. You take a sip of the old, stale coffee. The letters F and K seem clear as day. It's also really gross. Well, I can put some super spoiled milk in my super stale coffee. <laughs> uh, spoiled milk and old coffee. Yum. Did, did you actually put it in? So many of your internal organs are thanking you for refusing to drink from that again. Okay, I guess not. Where did the coffee even come from? Do I have a coffee maker? Because I don't see one. Okay, it looks like we're good. Let's grab these. A pair of GX Ultra Beats headphones. The ultimate in budget audio. You better try them out so you can start crafting your review. Yeah, time to get to work. They're smart headphones, so you should be able to use them with some things lying around your apartment. Um, what? Use them on some things lying around your apartment? What, what do you mean? Like, on my dying plant? What's that gonna do? No, don't listen. It's not a good vibe. Wait, are you saying they, like, produce music based on what you, like, touch them to or something? How does that even work? Okay, what about the book? Scan the book with your finger and the audio file begins playing on the headphones. Okay. Uh, cool. What about the poster? <laughs> you touch the poster and YMO begins playing in your ears. Okay, I, I guess we're good. Let's write this review. Alright, time to get your work out of the way. Let's do this. Selling your soul bit by bit. Character by character. Finished! Now to send it off to the editor. There. Your big break. Surely your glowing review of GX Ultra Beats in your, is your ticket out of poverty and into a book deal. Surely. Oh. That's why I'm using them. I was writing a review of them. That makes sense. Work is finally out of the way. Time for bed. But first, log out. Or you could read some OK Today and catch up on some real news before you sleep. I am going to do that. Uh, so this is my email, right? Yeah, this is my mail. Spam. Scam. Bill. Work. Rent. Promotional. Invitation. Weekly update. <laughs> Let's start with the spam. 
Get cheap crash. Only 99 creds for 30 day supply. 212 stims. Crash. That sounds like a horrible drug. Hello there. I am Prince Thomas. Yes, the Prince Thomas. Heir to the digital empire of... Uh, horse books 92413. I need your help to secure my great fortune. And of course, we'll reward you handsomely for your assistance. Please, if you could send your personal credit ID marker to me immediately, so that... Hmm, sounds like a great business opportunity. Oh god, it's red. Your account is past due in the amount of 216 credits. Failure to restore your account will result in termination of service. p p, -p, -p power co Ah, uh, yes. That age-old choice between food or electricity. Work email. Hey there. I'm lead editor for editor for Oh My God Zounds. We're, okay, okay, I hate you already. We're a new up-and-coming audio review feed looking for hot talent. We'd love to feature any product reviews you'd like to do for us. Is that who I just did the review for? For the lead editor of Oh My God Zounds? <laughs> Jesus Christ. We'd be able to give you some great exposure. And if we like your stuff, could possibly throw some creds your way. Oh yeah, that's that's wonderful. Write stuff for us, and we might, if we like you, we might actually like give you the the gift, the just the gift from our very heart of paying you for your work. That's so considerate of them. Doesn't anyone pay their journalists anymore? Rent? This one's not going to be read too, is it? Another article, another paycheck. And it's all going straight to your rent. <laughs> it's all paying for this horrible place. Promotion. A coupon for five credits back. <laughs> On a Hassy Infinity. <laughs> uh, it's the future where you read spam mail and it plays horrible noises. Jingles. A Hassy Infinity has all of your daily calories with none of the nutritional value. Like the opposite of a diet version. An invite to come see the lighting ceremony of the Christmas tree downtown from your friends at Dr. Trisha Lee, DDS. Why does a dentist want you to see a lighting ceremony? Feels like a trap. Weekly update. This is your weekly update from Vintage Tech, your number one source for classic technology. Popular pieces this week. The King of Click, a retrospective on the classic Model M, sorry, sorry, Model N keyboard. Unsubscribe. Is that seriously my only option? Fine, I guess I'll unsubscribe. I wanted to read that. Request denied. Subscription cannot be modified. <laughs> what? Uh, okay. Subscribe for life. Let's check out these. I've already looked at the inbox, but I haven't done this. Let's see if we can watch futuristic cat videos. This is Lips Live, the premier online video network. This app is like a mesh of all active streams. You turn on the GX Ultra Beats and they sync automatically. As you start to watch one of the baby animal feeds... Oh, I knew it! Please tell me it's a kitten. Lappy's speakers feel neglected. Oh, Lappy. Alright, what about the news? Okay, today is Neo SF's most beloved morning show, all about news and entertainment. People in Neo, Oklahoma are still confused by the name. Let's see. Let's get a feel for the world. See what's going. Oh god, the newspaper's animated. Of course it is. Current events, sports, local news. Okay, current events. A story about the human revolution. Ah, uh, the bigots, basically. Let's read it. By the way, excuse me if you hear any screaming birds in the background. Jesus Christ, they're loud. Come on, birds? Really? I'm recording here. Dicks. 
Anyway, human revolution remains vigilant. In, oh, Jesus Christ, remains vigilant in hashtag Stay Human movement. You know the sad thing about this is that this is totally something that could very easily and maybe even probably will happen. There's always people like that. You know? Go to modify your body, you're impure. You're subhuman or inhuman. You've perverted your body or something like that. I mean, hell, it even happens today in other forms. Obviously not quite as extreme as, I'm sure, the body modifications that they're able to do with the future technology, but... You know, just like somebody having um, a sex change. So, this gets close to home. This is all too real. December 19th, the human revolution is on day 10 of their protesting outside various genus buildings around the city, including those in the East Bay and down the peninsula. Genus, the gene splicing treatment facility, has been met with much controversy since the organization reached mainstream exposure last year. Genus employee Mort Crane spoke to OK Today exclusively. According to him, most genus workers are up in arms, claiming they're being terrorized in their own city. We're here to help people who need gene therapy for their own personal reasons, whatever they are, said Crane. Individual rights have always been of paramount importance to us, he continued, and we believe that our customers have the right to live as they please or require. The human revolution stands behind their claim that Genus is diluting the human experience by providing hybrids with gene splicing treatments. The group feels that the goals stated by Genus, in addition to newer cybernetic technology, are warping humanity into a very scary, dark future. They're playing God in the most senseless of ways. We were born human. Who are we to mess with our genes and start turning everybody into who knows what? Said one protester, who asked to remain anonymous. It's ridiculous and scary. It's not human. More information to follow as the story develops late into the holiday 2064 season. June Volmer Anna, OK Today. Sports. I'm probably not going to read this one because damn do I not care about sports. But hey, it's future sports, so maybe it's like a Hearthstone or something. Story about our hometown Neo SF 49ers. Woohoo! Yeah, I don't care. I guess. I guess I'll skim it. Quest for 10 is back on. Brings an important question to everyone's mind. Can the 49ers punch their ticket to the playoffs and bring the Lombard? I don't care. Yeah, okay. No. This is a mistake. I shouldn't have done this. Oh, wait a minute. This is interesting. Certain modifications of implants are banned by the League, but their official reports state their repeated investigation into Lopez found no evidence to substantiate these rumors. Yeah, in the future where you can make modifications so relatively easily to your body. That would have major implications for sports. I mean, already you have lots of controversies of, you know, people in sports using drugs to try to... Uh, using performance-enhancing drugs and things like that. It's relevant to point out that Lopez is the first woman to ever be quarterback in a major football team. Hmm. Then just back to sports. Local news. A story about a broken down Froyo stand. What the heck is Froyo? Golden Gate Park. Vandalism on the rise. You know, I actually went to Golden Gate Park, like, for the first time, um, three months ago? Like, three or four months ago? It was really, really pretty. December 19th. Reports show that local footy, footy, local foodie attraction JJ's Froyo stand was destroyed last night in what appears to be another case of a rogue rom committing an act of vandalism. A rogue rom? That sounds dangerous. 
The car was evidently attacked and damaged by a large ROM that had no shell. Witnesses state the alleged perpetrator has been randomly appearing at night before lumbering back into the nearby park forest. Oh my god, that sounds... That sounds terrifying. So you're telling me this robot, at night, comes out of the woods and destroys stuff and then goes back into the woods and just hides. That sounds terrifying. This is the first case of a ROM being reported to live on its own in the wild as a stray. Police say that tracking down a potential down a potential owner of the ROM is likely impossible. Is this the ROM I'm going to meet? The This is the first reported ROM to live on its own in the wild as a stray. Maybe this is the ROM that I'm going to meet, the one that's uh, sapient or sentient. Hmm. I think it might be. In that case, I'm going to have to ask it why I was destroying the stand. It probably had a good reason, right? Maybe it was unhealthy and it was doing it to protect the humans from high cholesterol. Some speculate that the strange ROM may have been framed by vandals who set their crime deliberately to make it appear to have been carried out by the ROM, rogue or under orders. Hmm. Okay, today I reached out to Parallax for comment. Okay, that's the company that makes the ROMs, right? And they assured us that the rogue ROM is purely a myth that tends to pop up conveniently when low-revenue businesses have the urge to file an insurance claim. Hmm. Parallax did not appreciate the reports of vandalism being attributed to their models. Is this wild ROM the real deal? Or could it be a fairy tale created by those looking to make a quick buck? Or perhaps there's something else to be gained. More as this story progresses. Mel Hopkins, okay today. Okay, well that's everything. Time to go to sleep. Hold on. What kind of beats can I get from my bed? The headphones detect that you're laying down and begin to play some soothing ocean sound effects. Oh, they are smart. <sighs> oh, hello. Is that my robot friend? It is! Ah, good. You're finally awake. Also, oh my god, that thing's adorable. <laughs> that thing's really adorable. I, I didn't realize it'd be so small. It's actually really, really tiny, isn't it? I'm honestly not sure why most humans still have such lengthy sleep cycles. Are you that significantly opposed to cybernetic augments? Well, I guess I should be surprised that a little robot just, like, broke into my... Well, not break, broke in, but... The window was open, to be fair. Although it didn't come in the window, did it? Well, anyway. I guess I should be worried, but it's kind of so cute that I'm not really worried, so... What? I hope you don't mind. While you were asleep, I had some spare time on my hands. So I reorganized your records and entertainment media using... This sack. Once that was done, I found the cleanliness of your living in workspace to be suboptimal conditions for the long-term performance of my micro-actuators. So I took the liberty of cleaning the place up a bit. As you awoke, I was attempting to interface and make performance adjustments to your personal computer, but I've run into a bit of a snag. <laughs> Let me guess, it's so old you can't even interface with it? You're all like... You're all like... USB 10.0 and it's all like, yo, I only accept Firewire. How did you get in here in the first place? I came in through the front door. The cryptographic algorithms it uses are actually quite abysmal. It only took me 17 trillion clock cycles to break your entry code. <laughs> That's a lot of cycles. Although, in the future, I guess, maybe not much. 
looks rather imposing, but it's actually a knockoff of the Secugate M blah blah blah. I knew my landlord was full of it when he said it was the best. Don't feel too bad. I actually cheated a bit when I cross-referenced known significant numeric codes against the stored personal data on you. I'm not certain why you picked the birthday of your first day, of your first dog, but it was sufficiently obscure to defeat most casual attempts to enter. Frankly, I felt a little silly that I took the time to do it once I noticed that the lock on your window is broken. Uh, not to mention, my window's open, too. And that you left it open? <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, wait a sec, what was that about my computer? Unfortunately, your motherboard seems to have broken down in some way while I was attempting to remove some particularly nasty malware. An electrical surge caused significant damage to several other components as well. I would consider it no great loss, though. Why were you using that dinosaur to begin with? I don't have enough money for a new computer. Don't fret. I did manage to back up your data drive's contents before the crash. Oh, thank god. Additionally, I'm willing to serve as your personal computer until you can procure a replacement or provide the parts necessary for me to make the repairs. It is the least I can do. Okay. And you decided to break into my home because... Ah, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to engage you in any sort of subterfuge, but I tend to ramble on a bit when I'm nervous. I have all of the necessary protocols, but I've never actually spoken to another person besides Hayden until now. You know my friend Hayden. Hayden Weber. Well, saying I know Hayden is putting it simply, but yes. I haven't seen Hayden in years. Where is he? I don't really know. That's why I'm here. Help me. You weren't quite my only hope, but certainly the most statistically supported. I've done the math. Uh, slow down, just start from the beginning. Imprecise, but I think I know what you mean. Earlier tonight, Hayden's apartment was assaulted by some unknown persons. He seemed frightened, terrified even, and instructed me to escape, lest I be captured by the intruders too. I crawled out of a window and, after some deliberation, came here. I heard them breaking down the door as I left. Why would they want Hayden? Hayden is one of the top researchers at Parallax, but I can't imagine that would be enough to get him kidnapped. Especially since no one has even tried offering him more money yet. I suspect it has to do with me. Who are you, anyway? What do you have to do with it? Ah, uh, excuse me. I forgot to introduce myself. I have never had the pleasure of doing so before. I am Turing. It sounds a bit unflattering, but I suppose you could describe me as one of Hayden's experiments. It's blushing! <laughs> He's currently researching advanced machine intelligence at Parallax. I'm a personal side project of his. Exploring true artificial sapiens. It's possible that the idea of a sapien machine could scare or tempt an organization into kidnapping him. Either to stop his research, or to take it and use it for themselves. Tell me more. A regular ROM has virtual intelligence. 
They can appear rather smart, even seeming human when you talk to them. This is just because they're cleverly programmed to respond to a variety of situations in an organic matter. They aren't in any way self-deterministic. As for myself, much of my code wasn't actually written by Hayden, but rather compiled during my infancy as I was taught to interact with the world around me. But, despite my ability to self-modify my code, I'm not certain that I'm sapient. I'm afraid to adapt or develop any further without Hayden's guidance. Did he only program me with the illusion of free will? How would you know, one way or the other? Hayden once told me that his desire to create artificial life stemmed from his need to find out. But I can't say I have any new insight into the question. It worries at me. How can any of you tell that you aren't just puppets dancing to someone else's will? I think we're getting a little too philosophical here. You're right. I apologize for the tangent. Why come to me? I ran an algorithm against every contact in Hayden's address book. Based on my assumptions of visibility, directness of connection to Hayden, occupational skill, and probable motive, you were the candidate most likely to both be able and willing to help me. And the one least likely to be suspected of helping me. I've never looked for a missing person, but I could try. The numbers don't lie about your terrific investigative skills, but I will admit your total lack of recent successes is worrisome. Hmm, we'll see about that. Don't worry, you're strong-willed and capable. I chose to put my trust in you. If anything, it's worth trying for Hayden. Was anyone out for Hayden? No. I'm not even certain who would benefit the most from taking Hayden prisoner. It's not as though he's been looking over his shoulder. However, there are several multinational corporations that could make use of his engineering skills. But I can't imagine any one of them would go as far as snatching him. He also has never indicated to me any possible danger from an outside person or group. We're out of time. Out of time? I took the liberty of charging the autocab fare from here to Hayden's apartment to your personal finance account, and the car has just arrived. Um, wait a minute. How- you just... used my money to pay for something? You realize I can't even, like, pay the bills, right? Why not go to the police? They might be able to help. No. We can't. Hayden warned me that the authorities could be in the pockets of whomever was after him. My own calculations show that the possibilities of corruption or a leak are dangerously high. If word gets out that Hayden is kidnapped, his life may be put in further danger. His chances of escape would surely decrease. We must keep this to ourselves for now. Please. Alright. Lead the way. That's strange. They seem to have replaced Hayden's door already. I'm certain my audio sensors picked up the sounds of his assailants breaking the lock. Hmm. Perhaps a maintenance robot took care of it? It's possible. Most of the repairs to the building are handled by the automated systems. Oh. A lucky break. It seems my access codes still work. Hayden's door is far better security than yours does. Just be careful. 
Will do. As you enter, you take a glance around the studio apartment. Not much has changed since your, since your last visit a few years ago. <laughs> oh my god. I saw that thing in the background, and it, my first thought was, Oh my god, he's looking at a roller coaster. Like, he gets to stare at a roller coaster all day from his apartment. And I thought, wait a minute. Wait, that's... <laughs> that's, not, <laughs> that's not a roller coaster, that's the Golden Gate Bridge. I can tell because it's a bridge, and they're in San Francisco, and it's literally gold. So I get to go on an investigation into a disappearance of my old friend with an awesome and adorable robot. This, this is so cool. I love this. It doesn't look like there's much of a struggle. I'm not surprised. Hayden is not the most physically intimidating of individuals. I doubt he could have fought off serious attackers. I should have stayed and tried to protect him. Aren't you programmed against harming humans? <laughs> of course not. How silly. To make a machine intelligence truly self-deterministic, it must be able to self-modify. Any sapient worth their silicon would be able to code around such an inhibitor eventually. I could rip your arm off right now if I cared to. <laughs> Thanks, Turing! You're such a good friend! Well, I guess we're not quite friends yet. Can we be friends? If we're friends, you can't rip my arm off, right? I'd really rather you didn't. I won't for the same reason you don't go around randomly killing people. The social contract, as a useful construct, is just as apparent to me as it is to you. It simply isn't acceptable to go on a murderous rampage. Glad we're clear on that one, buddy. Self-defense and defense of one's home and family is typically allowed, though. I could have and may even have been obligated to come to Hayden's defense. But... I... Well, he told you to escape. I mean, he wanted you to go. If they were after you, you did the right thing getting away. Excellent point. Let's start searching for clues. Oh, so many things to look at. Alright, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. We've started our investigation, and I'm intrigued why they'd want to grab him. It does sound likely that they wanted to grab him not necessarily to get him, but to get Turing. And they probably just grabbed him to try to get to Turing. But, of course, I guess we'll know more pretty soon once we check out this place. So yeah, so far, I really like this game. I really like it. I'm really intrigued by it. And it's... I, I really love the writing. And the characterization. And Turing is just so adorable. Just really, really adorable and cool. I really want to get to know Turing more. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And I'll be back soon.